Hi everyone, today I want to show you what you need to do when you get a new Mac. There are a lot of videos on YouTube talking about this topic, but most of them are talking about some settings and customizations and personal stuff, but not really about the things what you really need to do when you open the Mac for the first time. When you take it out of the box and turn it on, it will go through the setup assistant. That's already the first place where you can set a lot of things. You can log into iCloud, set up Touch ID and many other things. You can do it through the setup assistant, but you can also skip it and do all of these later on. Once you get to the Mac desktop, the first thing you need to do is to open the system settings and check for the software updates. You might think that when you are getting new Mac, you are getting the latest software. But what you don't know is how long the computer was sitting in the store. For example, this one I got in December. And already in the beginning of November, or maybe it was end of October, was the new system released. And yet the computer was still in the old one. So I had to reinstall the whole Mac OS before I could start using the computer. So pay attention to updates. It's really easy to check it out. You just open system settings and on the general tab, you can find your updates. Once you are in general in system settings, we have few other quick things we can check. In date and time, see if it's set to the right time zone. Macs are using location services, so it should be fine. But if not, set your own time zone or select this to get the time zones automatically. Next, we go to Privacy tab and scroll almost all the way down to the File Vault. Make sure it's turned on, because it will protect your data if you lose your Mac or if it gets stolen. It's definitely easier to activate this right in the beginning than trying to encrypt hundreds of gigabytes of data after. And once I'm talking about the privacy, you should also set up Touch ID. Most of the new Macs have Touch ID, so why not use it? You can set as many fingerprints you want, and if you share the computer with someone else, they can also have their fingerprints included in that. So it's really easy and convenient way how to log into your Mac, how to autofill passwords on Safari, or even make purchases on the App Store. Also, if you plan to be making purchases through the Mac, you can set up Apple Pay. Of course, it's not so useful as you have it on the iPhone because you are not carrying your Mac everywhere in the stores, but you can still use it for online purchases. And it's very easy and convenient way and even more secure than using your credit card directly. Now let's quickly have a look at iCloud and we are almost done with the boring setup in the beginning. So scroll all the way up here in system settings and click on Apple ID. Then select iCloud. If you follow the steps from the setup assistant, you should already be logged in. And here the first thing you need to do is to make sure that Find My Mac is activated. Find My Mac is very important because if somebody steals your Mac, you can locate it through this. And not only, you can also disable it or wipe the drive remotely with this feature. And one more thing you should do here is to deactivate iCloud backups for the desktop and documents folder. This feature is very confusing for most of the new Mac users and it's quite annoying. So click on iCloud Drive, Options and deselect the first thing. Now it will not be duplicating your files on the desktop and let you work normally. In the early stages of using your Mac, I would also recommend to set up Time Machine Backup. It's not something necessary, but it's good to have it straight away from the beginning. Now let's have a look at some other personal customizations and some other default settings. I talked about the most default annoying settings in this video. So if you are new to Mac, especially if you are new to Mac, you should check this video. It will save you a lot of time and nerves in the future. But for now, the first thing I want to change is tap to click. That I don't need to press the trackpad every time. You will find this option in system settings almost on the bottom. Here in trackpad, you can switch this 
and activate tab to click. Now let's have a look at Finder. You will be using that all the time, so it should be properly set. First thing what is missing in Finder are standout folders like music or movies. So open up Finder settings, switch to sidebar tab and add these folders like music, pictures, movies, anything you want there. And you can also remove recents and airdrop folders. These are not needed at all. Let's also change home location because as default it's actually opening in recents folder which I find very inconvenient. So go to general and here select different folder. I usually set it to Macintosh level, but you can use your documents or any other specific folder you are using often. Now we can close the settings, but I want to stay in Finder window for a bit more because there are a few useful bars you can add to the bottom of the Finder window. It's the tab bar, path bar and a status bar. They can be added through the view menu. You should surely show the status bar. It gives you information about the current folder and your overall computer storage. The bar appears when you open new tab, so you don't need to bother with it. And the path bar can be also activated differently. So I recommend to stick with the status bar. You don't need to overfill Finder too much. Now it's time to download some apps. If it's not your first Mac, you can open Mac App Store and download again your previously purchased apps. You will find a whole list of them if you click on your account on the bottom left corner. And now you can go ahead and press the download button for the apps that you want to be using on your new Mac. You can also press the subscribe button if you enjoy these videos, because I will make a lot more. And if you have purchased some apps outside of the App Store, maybe some Adobe apps, Microsoft Office or the VLC play I'm using. You should also go and revisit these websites and download the newest versions. Even if you have the installer on the old Mac, I recommend you to go to the websites and download it again, so you'll make sure that you have the latest version. Now when we downloaded all of these new apps, I think it's time to customize the dock. Here in front of you see your default set of apps how it's set up by Apple, but there are so many applications and icons I don't use or I don't use so often. So you can simply just take one, drag it up and drop it. This way you can clean up the dock and customize it the way you need it. I for example don't need App Store here. I'm not installing apps every day. I also don't need podcasts. I listen to it on iPhone. I don't use maps or contacts often as well. Also, Launchpad icon can be easily replaced by a simple trackpad gesture. And one more important thing. Let's get rid of these recent apps. Right click the separate line, go to Dock settings and hide recent applications. Now it's much cleaner, so I can add my own apps just by dragging it from the Launchpad or from the Applications folder. Next, I will change the desktop background and set a new screensaver. You can get to the settings by right clicking the desktop and you can change the wallpaper here. And the screensaver has its own tab right under. There are a few interesting screensavers. I will talk about it closely in one of the future videos. So if you want to see more about it, stick to Apple Academy. But one more thing connected to screensaver are the hot corners. The options have moved from here and now you need to go back to Dock Options. And here all the way on the bottom you will find the options for hot corners. I like to set the screensaver to the top right corner. But you have a lot more options here. So I think that's all that basic stuff you should do when you first open your Mac. It seems like a lot, but many of these things can be set up through the Setup Assistant right from the beginning and the rest takes just a few minutes. And I really think it's worth spending these few minutes in the beginning before you really dive in the Mac and start properly using it. If you have some questions regarding this topic or have some other suggestions, you can leave me a comment below so we can discuss it there. Now with the new Mac, I will be making lots more videos about this, about setting up the things, about the storage, about some maintenance. 
So I hope you will join me in next videos as well.